Before joining Amazon Web Services as an intern, I remember spending hours watching a day in the life videos on YouTube, trying to picture what it would be like working in a large tech company. These videos got me really excited and although I probably wasn't making the most out of my time watching everybody's morning routine and free work lunches, it really motivated me to stay resilient and not give up after every interview rejection. There were a few things though that I wish these videos covered. I wanted to know more about what interns actually get to work on, how teams communicate and solve problems together, and what challenges interns face during their short time in the company. If you're new here, my name is Lucy and I make videos all about tech, career and student advice. Today I wanted to talk a bit about my experiences with Amazon Web Services and answer these three questions. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this and you're a current or incoming intern, please consider subscribing for more. Let's get into it. It's 9 o'clock in the morning now and at 10 o'clock I have a meeting with my manager and a few of the cloud consulting interns to go through the different projects that we have over the summer and figure out which one we want to do. So we can do them either um, in pairs or in small groups or even individually and we can choose between quite a few technical and non-technical projects. So I thought I'd take this time to talk a bit about what interns actually do in internships aside from everything you see in the typical day in the life videos um, you know, apart from those coffee catch-ups and virtual intern events. I guess what you do as an intern really varies from company to company and really depends on the length of your internship. So a one month long internship could look very different to a six month long internship. And for example, when I was at Deloitte last summer, my internship was for four weeks. Um, and this really involved a lot of shadowing, getting to know the team. Um, and I wasn't specifically placed onto a project to work on um, because just because there wasn't really enough time for you to make much of an impact. It was more about learning about the company, learning about the team and seeing if you like the company and seeing if the company likes you. And on the other hand, my internship with AWS, I was interning for six months in one team. And with that, I was able to take ownership of three projects and see them end to end. This was a really good experience because um, especially with a longer internship, you're not only able to be immersed in the company culture, but you're able to make a real tangible impact in the team that you're assigned to as well. And I think that that is super valuable as an intern, um, especially when you get the chance to see what you like and you don't like in the company, uh, to see if that company is right for you. So in terms of a typical day though, it really depends as well because um, it really comes down to what you want to gain out of the internship. I think sometimes if you just want to kind of um, like have fun and see how things go, not really set any goals, kind of like do the bare minimum to get by as an intern, your day might look quite empty because if you just go to the required meetings and kind of like do what you're told to do, um, it, that, that would be fine. Like you would still be able to continue on with your internship and le learn a few things. But if you really want to stand out as an intern and potentially land a full-time role after your internship, I think it's really important for you to be able to set measurable goals and be proactive about your learning so that by the end of the internship, when you reflect, you can see that even though you were just an intern, you were able to make a contribution to the team that you're in um, and also be able to um, have like a graduate position at the end where you're able to come back to if you're interested in staying with the company. So I guess the main takeaway is that no two internships are the same. Some of them you might be working on multiple projects, some of them you might be doing more shadowing and more learning. So it's really up to you to make the most out of every opportunity that you're offered. Okay, so it's 12 now and I'm going to take a bit of a break from using my standing desk. After lunch, I'm going to be sitting here and I typically try and alternate between using the two just to make sure that I'm not sitting at the same place um, the entire day and getting a lot of back pain. Okay, so I just had lunch and now I wanted to talk a bit about how teams communicate and collaborate with each other. So I guess it really depends on the company and the team that you're in. Um, and even with Amazon as well, in such a big company, different teams have different ways of doing things. And from my experience, I think what I saw that was quite common is having stand-ups, um, especially during a virtual setting, having a daily stand-up or a weekly stand-up can really help keep everyone in the team accountable, um, especially during interns with interns as well. Sometimes you might not understand half the things that are being discussed in the team stand-ups because you're working on your own project, but it's a really good way to see how everything fits in together in a company, uh, which is pretty cool. And um, at 
Amazon and at quite a few different companies as well. I think there's like really helpful collaboration software. So um, in Amazon, we use Amazon Chime. So that's like a video conferencing software for us to connect virtually. Um, and in, yeah, di in different companies, it might be Zoom or Google Meets, things like that. Um, and there's also different ways of collaborating as well um, in terms of using shared like drives, um, collaboration folders, and um, I guess another thing that we have and um, different companies have different ways of doing this is sort of how we brainstorm different ideas and how we are able to turn ideas into reality. So we have something called narratives and also things called like PR FAQs and these are ways for us to kind of like um, generate an idea and to be able to e elaborate and expand on it. Um, get people's feedback. And I guess the main takeaway for interns or people who are going into an internship is that at the start you might be quite overwhelmed with the different tools, the different ways of doing things in a company, especially if you haven't um, seen it being done in any other sort of role that you were in before. So don't be afraid to ask questions, um, ask what sort of norms there are um, in certain teams. Like if you have a stand up that you have to go to every single week or if you have like a team social event that is optional for you to attend, things like that, just making sure and clarifying um, what are the ways that different teams communicate and work together, especially in a virtual setting, you might end up um, missing out on certain things if you don't ask the right questions about it. Okay, so it's around 5.30 now and I wanted to talk a bit about the challenges that you face as an intern. So I've just finished work, um, done for the day, and this is kind of the last part I want to discuss for this video. Um, and this part is something I think is quite important because there's a big emphasis on getting that first internship. There's a big emphasis on um, how to do well, um, how to succeed, the, the benefits of internships, but not too much is discussed on what challenges interns face and more importantly, how to avoid these challenges in the first place. And if you do find yourself having this challenge, how you can kind of work around it. So when I was doing, doing some planning last night for the video, I sort of came up with a list of things that I personally um, found challenging as an intern. And depending on people's personalities, everyone sort of gets a different set of challenges that they might face. Um, I think for me specifically, some of the big ones on the board were a fear of uncertainty, feeling overwhelmed by the amount of information I don't know and the amount of information that I need to know, not really sure if I'm doing well, connecting with the team, feeling like it's an extended interview. I try not to think like that, but sometimes you feel like you're being kind of assessed during the process. So I wanted to kind of talk a bit about that and how you can sort of overcome these challenges if you face these yourself. Okay, so the first challenge I wanted to talk about is the fear of uncertainty how you can overcome that when things are just out of your control sometimes. You don't know a lot of new terms and it's kind of impossible to pick up everything at once. I think first of all, recognizing that you're not gonna know everything the first few days. Um, and second of all, trying your best to make sure that you um, can cover a lot of things really quickly that you're uncertain about to give yourself more of a peace of mind. So I think for Amazon, um, what we normally get is like an onboarding plan. So it's something that links a lot of resources together to make sure that we're able to um, quickly uh, figure out different processes in the company, learn about the culture, um, learn about what we kind of need on our role. So I think doing that really helps, trying to make sure that you utilize the resources that you're given so that you can help yourself limit that anxiety and uncertainty that you face. And I think also just recognizing that not everything is gonna be on paper. So asking a lot of questions when you're uncertain about something really helps. I think people, especially when you're an intern, people are always willing to help. And that's something that I really have appreciated throughout my internship journey and has helped me a lot with this fear of uncertainty. One more thing you can do is to find a mentor, whether that be within the company or outside the company. Sometimes you're assigned to one, but I think sometimes it's okay if you want to proactively search for a mentor that's not necessarily in your current team. I think just having someone you can trust, someone you can sort of rely on um, when there's questions that you want to ask or if there's any advice that you want to seek, it really helps remove that uncertainty as well. The second challenge that I faced was connecting with people in my team and outside of my team. I think in my previous internships, I've always taken a bit longer than the other interns to really bond with 
people in the team that I was in. Um, but working from home definitely made it a lot worse because people talk less about their life, their hobbies, their career aspirations, things like that when they're not in the office, when they're on a virtual chime call. Um, working from home mainly as a new intern, it's kind of hard to break the ice initially. It's So it's something that you have to consciously try and do. So what I recommend doing is making the effort to get to know everyone in your team. So when you first join, set up half an hour calls with people in your team and making sure that you specify that it's specifically just to try and um, get to know each other and to maybe for you to learn a bit about what they do, their role, but you know, specifically to sort of like get to know them as a person as well. So that way you can break the ice early on um, to avoid those initial like awkward conversations that you have and um, making sure that you have a more enjoyable experience working from home. Because connecting with people is quite important. I think as an intern, when you can get all your work done, go above and beyond, um, make an impact in your team, it's as good as that is, it's very important to be able to integrate well with the team, earn trust with them and really get to know people as who they are outside of work as well. The third and final challenge that I'm going to talk about today is sometimes feeling like your internship is like an interview. I've heard this phrase a lot from people in the past um, and I think it's coming from good intentions because they want you to kind of keep it in the back of your mind that you're be kind of being assessed, um, your performance is being assessed so that in the end you can receive a return offer. Um, but I think it's quite an unhealthy mindset sometimes. It can get quite unhealthy especially if you're an overthinker, you can't just kind of fixate on that long-term end goal and not be able to kind of focus on other things. And it, it does sound a bit quite extreme, but overthinkers will kind of know what I mean by this. But I think what really helped me overcome this challenge, um, and I was really lucky to be able to change my mindset and overcome this challenge within the first two months of the internship, um, it was to focus less about myself, um, what the company can bring to me, but instead focus more, on, especially since I was an intern for six months, what I can offer to my team and what value I can bring to the company. So with that in mind, I was focusing more on how I can make my manager's day easier. Things like what help I can offer to others outside my team and how to be more involved as an intern just to have some more fun um, throughout my internship experience. So with that, I was able to overcome that or like everything is an interview sort of mindset. And I would recommend doing the same, trying to figure out what value you can bring to the company. And this basically wraps up my video. Hopefully in this video, you were able to learn more about what interns actually do, how teams communicate and collaborate to solve problems, and what challenges interns might face working from home. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you want to see more tech, student or career related advice videos. Bye for now.